There is a lot of negativity around Man United fans at the moment, understandably so after what has been a poor start to the season. But amidst all the poor results and everything that's gone on so far, I think there are plenty of positive stories which are getting ignored, which are getting brushed under the carpet because United overall have had a poor start to the season. So what I want to do in this video is highlight those positives because it's not all doom and gloom like some people would have you imagine. And I want to run through what I think has been the positives of this season so far. Now, if you are new to United People's TV, make sure you subscribe down below, hit that notifications bell as well. But let's take a look at what I think are the positives. Now, the first on my list is absolutely Scott McTominay. Now, McTominay should not be the best midfielder at a club that has Paul Pobber and a World Cup winner and Fred, who's a £60 million Brazilian midfielder, but he is. McTominay is United's first choice midfielder and in a position where we've been starved of any sort of quality for so long, McTominay's performances this season have been outstanding. He's broken through to become our first choice midfielder. Now, sheer hard work is not the measure of a good midfielder, but pure laziness has been the measure of United's midfielders for so long that McTominay's performances are standing out head and shoulders above what we're used to. And he's setting the standard for what our midfielders should be doing. What Pogba, what Fred, what Pereira, what anybody, Matic as well, Christ, what they all should be playing towards. McTominay's setting that standard. And that's all down to his own hard work. And so many of us laughed at Jose Mourinho, myself included, when he gave McTominay that sort of manager's player of the year award, it didn't really exist. But we've all been proven wrong. Game on game, McTominay keeps improving. He leaves everything on the pitch and he gives everything to the team. Against Arsenal, he was the one chasing the game and he's a defensive midfielder. McTominay is not going to become a world-class midfielder. But like Henderson is to Liverpool, if you're a Liverpool fan, you love Henderson. If you're not a fan of Liverpool, you think he's an average player. I think that McTominay will grow into becoming our type of player like that. That when we do have a top quality midfield around him, he's still going to be the one doing all the hard work. And for me, McTominay's breakthrough to become so far United's best midfield of this season is a massive positive so far. As well as the breakthrough of McTominay, you've got to look at the success story of Dan James so far. United signing Dan James was considered a step down by so many fans. Signing a championship winger from Swansea who hasn't really done much, hasn't scored many goals. It was seen by many as a sort of acceptance of us not being a top level club. I felt a bit differently about it. I felt, you know, what if Dan James could go on to use United as his platform to grow as a player? And my God, he's done that so far. United's player of the month in his first month at the club and again, like McTominay should not be United's best midfielder, Dan James shouldn't be our best attacker. Not with Martial, not with Rashford, not with the players that we've got in this squad. But right now he is. And again, that's down to his own hard work. It is indicative that United just aren't good enough anywhere on the pitch at the moment. But Dan James' success can't be ignored just because we're not having a good season. And for the kid as well, it's been a massively tough six months for him. All the speculation surrounding his move, finally securing his move to United and his dad tragically passing away. Before seeing him succeed at United, he'd be so proud of what Dan James has been doing. And that explosion of emotion that happened when he scored on his debut at Old Trafford against Chelsea, you saw how much it meant to him. You saw the players, how much it meant to them as well. For me, that's been the high, that, that moment there was the best moment of the season so far. And as I said, there's so much negativity around United now that these stories aren't getting talked about. But Dan James and his breakthrough, like McTominay, they're setting the benchmark for what Solskjaer wants his players to do. The work ethic is not the measure of a good team, but it can be the measure of a bad team. And United haven't had it for so long, so to see what James is doing, and the end product is getting better and better. You know, he's a young kid, he's going to keep improving. But so far, he's far exceeded the expectations on himself. And he should be extremely proud of that. And like Dan James came in during the summer, so did Harry Maguire and Aaron Wan-Bissaka. And both of them have settled in at United extremely quickly. 
And the reason I'm so happy about that is because if you look at United signings for the last six, seven years, <laughs> list them off. Memphis Depay, Di Maria, Schweinsteiger, Schneidlin. So many players have come with expectations on their shoulders and not settled in. Wan-Bissaka and Maguire have made United home very quickly. Wan-Bissaka has been absolutely imperious at right back, a position where we've been massively weak ever since Raphael and Gary Neville left. We've never properly replaced them. We have now, properly. He's plugged a hole that was such a big problem for United for years, and he's been fantastic. Maguire, I don't think he's had a, as much of a direct influence on the starting eleven as wan Saka has so far, but Maguire is the leader that we've been missing. The longer he plays for United, the more his influence will grow. And I think he will be captain next year. And I think he's going to be better next year. But Maguire coming in, wan Saka coming in, James coming in, all three of them have been three of United's best players so far, and they're all Solskjaer's signings. It's either a coincidence or it's a sign of what's to come if we stick by Solskjaer, get through this painful patch, because it's going to be there for a while, but United are a rotten club, and that's why maybe these three signings are an indication of where we can go next. And I think that is a major positive of the season so far, for sure. And as well as McTominay and Dan James, wan and Maguire, we're watching the start of hopefully something special in Mason Greenwood. Now, when you see certain kids coming through the academy, they stand out. Paul Popper, for example, when United won the FA Youth Cup, it was up a man against boys. He was so far above that level. And Greenwood, for me, he had that same sort of confidence. It's not arrogance, it's confidence. He's got an assured head on his shoulders. He's confident in his own ability. And with two goals and two starts, two very accomplished finishes, we've seen what he's all about straight away. And I think the RVP comparisons are fair because when players come into the first team, take Tyler Blackett, Paddy McNair, Love, there's been a lot of players that have come through in recent years, especially under Van Howe, that played a few games and then disappeared. Greenwood doesn't strike me as one of those players. He strikes me as a player who is going to play for United for a long time. And Solskjaer, you know, he's got a good set of youngsters coming through, which I will speak about next. But Greenwood looks, for me, the real deal. And I can't wait to see how he grows at United. But he's got such a mature attitude and approach to the game that unlike Ravel Morrison, a player who had all the talent in the world, I think Greenwood's got the approach to match it. He's professional. He's only just turned 18. He's got his whole career ahead of him. And with Lukaku and Sanchez gone, the platform is there for him to succeed. And I genuinely mean this. I would rather see United struggle without Lukaku and Sanchez than United struggle a little bit less and have two players around the club that I don't want there that didn't want to be there. Greenwood wants to play for United. He wants to score goals for United. And I think we're seeing the start of something very special in Mason Greenwood's career. And that is down to Solskjaer. And then if you take a look at the youth in general, Axel Tuanzebe, Angel Gomez, Tahith Chong, all at different stages of their young careers, but all being given chances by Solskjaer. Tuanzebe for me looks like a captain in the making. He got the captain's armband against Rochdale and he was imperious there. He was forced to play left-back against Arsenal and for the majority of the game, he was fantastic. Such a shame that mistake puts a cloud over it. But Tuan Zebe was promoted to third-choice centre-back by Solskjaer. He let Smalling leave. He's hardly played Jones. He's hardly played Rojo. He's playing Tuan Zebe. And that is a positive. Angel Gomez finally getting his breakthrough into the first team that we've all been waiting for. Yes, he's not ready for it completely, and neither is Tahith Chong, who I think is probably the furthest away. But Solskjaer, like Van Howe, has allowed players to leave, shrunk his squad, and has allowed youngsters to come through. Now, United are struggling because we don't have these seasoned professionals here anymore that can come on and do a job in comparison to the, to the youngsters. But as I said, I would rather see United struggle through this and see the starts of young careers 
then United have journeyman professionals that don't want to be here that could do a better performance now in the short term. I think what we're seeing here this season is a longer term view of things. Because in the short term, it would be better to have Lukaku. It would be better to have Sanchez. But it wouldn't allow Solskjaer to bring through these players, which in the long term might serve United better. It's definitely going to get worse before it will get better. And we're seeing that. But I think, again, Solskjaer's faith in the youth, deciding to turn to them instead of sticking with the seasoned, much more mature professionals, is something I think is a positive. Now, I'm not trying to paint United's season like a Disney film because it's been largely shit. United are mid-table, our worst start in the 30 years, and things are not going right. But I think the doom and the gloom is a bit overstated, if I'm honest. Because Solskjaer, for me, is the right man to help rebuild this rotten football club. And everybody has to come to a realisation. I had mine last weekend. United are not good anymore. We're a crap team. We've got a crap squad. This season's going to be painful. But if I'm looking at it from the perspective of McTominay breaking through, Dan James breaking through, the success stories of wan and Maguire so far, Greenwood coming through, the youth coming through, I can see the foundations are there, the foundations are being laid for that rebuild. And you know what I think about the rebuild. I did a, a longer video on this previously. But I understand the frustration with a lot of United season so far. But I think it's massively unfair to paint it all negatively because there are positives. And these are the ones that I think we should be praising and not just ignoring and brushing under the carpet because we keep drawing games. I don't think that's fair. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Am I being foolish in sort of saying that there are reasons to be positive this season? Or do you agree with me that maybe it's not all doom and gloom? that the press and some fans will have you believe. Let me know what you think in the comments below, as always. And if you are new to United People's TV and you're still here, make sure you subscribe. Until next time, though, take it easy.